Hello, welcome on this new lecture on Windows PowerShell for Citrix 715. So PowerShell is a really a very important way today to manage your solution. I'm using PowerShell since more than uh, 10 years uh, and uh, really it's very important for your daily work uh, that you use PowerShell. So PowerShell is really a way to do automation and to do the, your task uh, very fast so you have you know the GUI we're using the GUI since the uh, the, the, um, the beginning of the training but uh, of course uh, uh, sometime when you're working with a, a big company or sometime maybe you have a lot of things to do on your application and the studio is not really the best solution for uh, uh, managing uh, all your configuration so we'll have some example about how can you use PowerShell every day. So first of all, you must know something is that um, in, in Studio, uh, when you're using the Studio, uh, everything is in PowerShell. So if I show you, if I go here on my broker and I go on my Studio, and for example, uh, I go on, on, on one application, let's say I will go on my, um, on my Notepad++ application, and I wouldn't change, for example, the properties. So, so for example, I want to um, let's say uh, change, for example, the description. Okay, to put some uh, some keyword. So, for example, I don't know if you remember, but we saw that you have a way to put your application in the favorite folder in the storefront. So. I did some uh, explanation about that. So, for example, here, if you put keyword auto, you remember that it will put automatically for you the Foxit reader in the favorite um, page tab on your storefront server. So, for example, let's say that I want to change it and I want to go to Notepad uh, here, all my Notepad software, and I want to change my description here. Okay, so I go here on properties. And I want to change my properties here. So for that, if I do OK, what is happening is that uh, he will uh, log this this uh, task here in the logging. So first of all, you will see that in logging uh, for the uh, 25th of August, I see that I have here my uh, my task here. So remember that I change my application for the desktop delivery group the dg for hr uh, hr published apps and i change the application here so uh, so the first thing is that in powershell he will do the log of that so he will log it here in my uh, logging uh, database and you will see that because if you go here in studio you see that you have a tab powershell and if you see powershell here uh, you will see that um, I change my uh, information so I can go here and I see that it's the 22 of August uh, but if I go all down I will see my last command here so this is a nice way to see all what you did here in PowerShell so you can really go in PowerShell and see uh, what you did here so uh, when you close your studio the thing is that all the command will go away because it is just stored here just to the time of the session. So if I go back now in studio, uh, you will see that there will be no more uh, history of the, about the PowerShell command. That's why when you, uh, uh, when you do something in the studio, maybe you want to use the PowerShell command that was generated by your task in the studio and use it, for example, in a script. So be aware that uh, the PowerShell command will be here just the time of the session. So if I go here in PowerShell, I see that there is no more uh, uh, command here. Okay. Uh, so if I go back on my um, on my application, and let's say that I, will, I must change something here, I will do it again because you know there were so many command. So if I go back here on my on my Notepad here, and let's say I, I change here my uh, keyword and let's put mandatory here. So let's go here and put mandatory. 
um, and I do OK, you will see that here in PowerShell, you will have here, uh, first of all, the uh, um, uh, the way that he will add it to the to the log, and here you, you see that I have my uh, my uh, set here uh, application and the name of my application and 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 a keyword here. Okay, so uh, of course uh, when you do PowerShell, you don't you don't uh, uh, input this sort of object. Okay, it will be more simple. But this is the first thing. Okay, so when you uh, do something in the GUI here. You will have your partial here, and um, you will have also uh, some of your last action. Okay, this is can be nice, and um, and uh, and remember that you have your comment task here. So um, so this is my my set configuration. Okay, this is what I did here the last time here. Uh, okay, so secondly. Um, let's go back here on my uh, slide. Uh, you must know that you have some action uh, that you cannot do without PowerShell. So, so this is important because um, often people say, "Okay, why must I use PowerShell? Um, why uh, can I just use uh, my GUI?" No, because some action you can do it only with PowerShell. For example. Uh, when you want to uh, see if the local host cache is enabled, you must do a set broker site local local uh, host cache enabled true, and of course we disable the connection listening because this is an old way. We'll see that in the HA high availability section of the course. So after, for example, uh, when you enable XML trust, uh, this is done when, for example you want to uh, enable a single sign-on, for example, or, for example, you uh, you add um, in your DMZ the Netscaler, and the Netscaler is, um, this, this the, Netscaler is the, the point where you will type your username and password, and this information will be passed to the delivery controller, and, uh, and, and to the storefront, and of course uh, to the delivery controller. So this is one of the of the situation where you must change it with uh, uh, change the XML trust. So um, you do it also with, for example, solution like uh, um, you know the uh, when you are using the lingering and the quick launch. This is also one of the way you must use it. So really, I recommend PowerShell for automation. As soon as, as you have changed the parameter on the application, the studio is not efficient. Okay, so it's better to use really the um, uh, the PowerShell uh, the PowerShell for that. So, for example, you have an example here where you do a get broker application and pipe convert to CSV to have a very nice way uh, of having a report of all your applications. So, if I go here and I go in my broker here. And uh, I type the, the the command I just I just showed you in my slide. So um, uh, so let's go back here on my slide. And if I go here, uh, I can say get uh, broker application. And when you do that, um, if I do uh, um, out uh, out, for example, grid view. Or out uh, CSV like I want. If I do a grid view, for example, he will take all my application and he will show me some of the uh, of the uh, properties that you use in your application. So this is, for example, the command line executor with description: uh, is it enabled or not? Uh, the icon. Uh, so you know here you have a lot of information about your application. Uh, of course, if you don't do it with the out grid view, you have to. He will display all the application here, so like this. See, so for example, I have my Notepad here. I can have information about my Notepad, the, the application folder name, the application name, the the application type is hosted on desktop, for example, and the browser name, the the client folder, and the command line executable. So meaning that if you want, for example, to change the uh, command line of of I don't know WordPad, for example. Uh, just uh, get, imagine that WordPad is not more on C drive, but on D drive. I don't know. You can change it here. So we'll see uh, how to change uh, some of these properties in our lab. 
um, let's go back here to our slide. Um, so uh, secondly, uh, we have the how to uh, load the Citrix uh, command. Uh, you must know that um, uh, if, if uh, you want to install uh, on the other machine uh, the uh, snap-in, okay, a snap-in is like a module, you can go on uh, the machine that you want and go in your ISO file and go in a x64 folder and just uh, install the uh, snap-in. And after you can load the command, so if you want to load all the modules, you can type the add ps snap in Citrix star. When you do that, he will uh, he will load 25 modules. Um, and uh, and uh, and Virtual Atom Desktop uh, contains 17 modules. So, for example, the store phone contains more than 100 common let, while Citrix Virtual Desktop contains more than 600 common let. And um, and that's it. Okay, so so it's very simple. Uh, so you want to load you want to load the the PowerShell module. This is not an issue. You just go here uh, on PowerShell. For example, you type add ps uh, ps snapping and you type Citrix star if you want to load all the module. We'll see after that. Maybe you want to load only some module. And after you, if you do a get command and let's for example do an out grid view. Okay, this is all the command, of course. And you, you go in source here, he will uh, uh, show you all the module that you have actually loaded. And you will see that you have Citrix broker here. You have Citrix Active Directory, so you have a lot of them. So for example, if I see here, I can see that all this command is for Citrix Active Directory identity for MCS, for example. After I go down, I have analytics. I have app library here. And uh, if I go all down, I have uh, uh, admin. So this is, for example, to add uh, other admin, for example. This is the broker admin. So broker admin is really to do, for example, a get broker machine. So you can have all the machine in a catalog, for example. So this is in the broker admin. This is one of, okay, This is, I use it a lot, this one, of course. After you go down, you have the other sort other module here. You have the configuration, but for example, you want to, to uh, configure the DB connection, for example, you have the logging. So this is to for the log. You have the admin. So if you want, for example, delegated admin, if you want to add a new administrator to use uh, the studio, this is where you can do it. And you have all the host admin module. This is for the hypervisor. So you have so many, so many PowerShell module. Okay. So this is the end of this lecture. And after we'll move to uh, how to find the command. Uh, on the PowerShell module. Thank you for all and hope to see you in the next module. Bye-bye.